In today's video, I am sharing my review of the Chalk and Notch page hoodie and I'm also showing you how I go from this to this. So today's video is a very exciting one for multiple reasons. First of all, this is a collaboration with my lovely friend Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. We both fell in love with the Chalk and Notch page hoodie when it was released recently and we decided that we both wanted to make it up and share our videos with you guys. If you have no idea who Karina is, I highly suggest you head on over and check her channel out because she's amazing. I've learned so many tips, tricks and techniques over on her channel. She does a lot of practical sewing. Also, Karina recently hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is mind-blowing. Congratulations, Karina. I'm really happy for you and you totally deserve it. So now back to the page, which I'm wearing right now, by the way. So the page already has two views. View A has a banded hem and that is the version I am sporting right now. And view B has a drawstring hem and that is the version that Karina made over on her channel. There are also different sleeve options. So you have short sleeves, you have the slim sleeve, which is the one I did. And then you have the full sleeve, which is slightly balloony. PHRD comes in sizes zero to 24. So a pretty big size range. And there are also two cup size ranges. So you have the A and B and the C and D. For my hoodie, I chose this black cotton lycra and the lining of my hood is also cotton lycra and it's in like a confetti type print. This hoodie is not finished yet. So spice it up a bit. I'm gonna be adding this graphic from this old tank top on to my hoodie. But before I get to that, I'm gonna show you guys the muslin that I made. It's very wearable and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the alterations that took the muslin to this. So this is my muslin. It's made up in a royal blue velour knit. So this one I went down a size from what was recommended in the size chart because this is supposed to be a fairly oversized hoodie and I wanted mine just a little bit more fitted. So I went with size 10 and then I graded to size 8 at the waist. I also shortened the sleeves two inches. Now, just around the time when we we're getting ready to make up our hoodies for this collaboration, Chalk and Notch announced that they were releasing a free add-on and that is this crew neckband. So this would take it from a hoodie to a sweatshirt. And I actually didn't have enough fabric to make a hood on this muslin anyway, so this worked out perfectly. So I've added the crew neckband here. And this muslin is very wearable. I was pretty happy with the fit with a few exceptions. Now that you've already seen my hoodie and you know what that fit is like, you're probably wondering what I did to go from this to that. And I'm gonna share those alterations with you now. So the first alteration I'm going to make is to lengthen the pattern by one inch. So we're going to lengthen at the lengthen and shorten cut line on both the front and back pieces. I'm sure most of you already know how to do this. So I'm just gonna fast forward to this part. So the next change I'm going to make is I want my bottom bands, my hem bands, to be just a few inches shorter so that it fits a little bit more snug around my waist. So from my muslin, I decided that I wanted them to be two inches shorter total. So I'm going to take an inch away from the back hem band and also an inch away from the front hem band. Now to do this, what I've done is I've gone ahead and drawn a line parallel to the center fold line on both hem bands and this is going to be my new lengthen and shorten line from this line we're going to then draw an inch and just like any other lengthen and shorten line we're going to fold this line onto this line. Just want to make sure that you keep everything parallel and straight. And we're going to tape this down. And then that is the front hem band shortened one inch. And of course, we're going to repeat for the back.
so now we have both the back and front hemband shortened we're going to have to adjust the front piece and the back piece of the hoodie so that these can then match so before i adjusted my hemband what i did was walk this seam along the front bodice just so i can get an idea how much shorter it was than the front piece and i did this because i want to reduce that because i am not a fan of the rippling effect when the band has to be pulled so tightly to fit such a large surface area but when i walked the hem i found that there was two inches difference between the bottom of the front piece and the hem band so that is a little bit too much for me and i want to take half inch off of that so i'm gonna walk this seam again and then i'm only going to do one and a half inches difference so let's do that now so you're gonna line up and you're just gonna curve it as you go okay i'm going to put a little mark right here and what i'm going to do next luckily i'm using my mat so this should be easy we want it to be one and a half inches over instead of two so right about here is one and a half so now what we need to do is grade the side seam from the arm all the way down to this side and it's going to look a little bit excessive but this is just the fit i prefer for my hoodie so for the back piece when i walked the original pattern there was one and a half inches difference and remember i said i want mine to be just half inch smaller so i'm going for one inch instead so i'm going to walk this and then i'm going to leave one inch and grid again just like we did the front so now i'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess and now you can see that instead of it coming out, it now goes in at the waist. I have my new front bodice, my new back bodice, my new front hemband, my new back hemband. And the only other change I made is that I went ahead and shortened my sleeve two whole inches at the length and shortened cut line. I personally don't like when cuffs pass my wrist, they tend to harass the palm of my hand so I like them to stop right here and for me that is 2 inches. So yeah, that's it for my alterations. Now we're moving on to the fun part. So this is an old Barbie tank top that I'm not too happy with the fit of. It's a bit too tight, it's a bit too long, I even cut it and I'm still not happy with the fit. But I really did not want to get rid of this graphic. So I decided that I'm going to transfer the graphic from my tank top onto this hoodie and I think that is going to look super cool. And of course, I'm going to share my method with you. There are a number of ways that you can do appliques or transfers. You have the printing option where you purchase the transfer sheets, you print your design and then you'd iron that onto the clothing. There's the standard way of applique where you zigzag around the edges and I'm sure there are a number of other ways. But my favorite method and the one I'm sharing with you today is using heat and bond. I have the heat and bond ultra hold and this is the no so one. This is the one that does not require steam and is machine washable. If you prefer the one that you can sew through, you can get the light version of this. You'll use that to apply the applique and then you can zigzag around the edges like normal for extra stability. Since I am using a knit fabric, I really don't need to zigzag the edges because they're not gonna fray anyway. So this is gonna be perfect. And that is one of my tips for transferring a graphic from one item of clothing to another is it's way easier if you use a knit because you don't have to worry about the edges fraying this is another example of one that i've put up for future use so this came off of a white t-shirt and we know how white is i've had that t-shirt for years and the white became very stained but i really wanted to save the little alien to put on something else so i simply just cut around the outline 
And whenever I decide I'm gonna put this on an item of clothing, I'm also going to use the same method. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is cut around our graphic. We're not gonna cut it exact at this point. I belong, I belong to you. So we're gonna set this aside and get our heat and bond prepared. So this is what the heat and bond packet looks like up close. When you open your packet, you're going to get a full sheet. You're immediately going to notice that there is a textured side and it feels like glue. And then there's a side with a paper backing. So we want our heat and bond to be sticky side up. So the side without the paper backing. Then we're going to place our graphic on top of that, wrong side down. So the wrong side of our graphic is facing the gluey side of our heat and bond. I'm using my weights just to keep everything in place because what we're going to do now is cut around the heat and bond to match this. Of course, it would have been easier if I had just cut a square now we want to take this over to our ironing board when we bring our graphic over to our ironing board we want to flip it over so that the paper backing is facing up your iron should be on medium heat with no steam and we're gonna go ahead and press the paper backing you're gonna hold for a few seconds at each point so now our heat and bond is adhered to our graphic the next step is to go ahead and now cut this down to the desired shape so what i'm going to do for mine is i'm gonna cut this square piece i'm gonna go around this triangle come around around the words down to this point and then these three ones I'm gonna cut those separately now that we have our graphic cut out we're gonna move on to arranging the placement on the hoodie now it would have been easier to apply the graphic onto the hoodie before even sewing it up. But for the purpose of this video, I decided I would do it last, just in case you have a graphic that you would like to apply to an item of clothing that is already made up. Okay, now we have two options. We can either just eyeball the graphic, or we can actually go through and do some measurements and make some markings just to make sure that it is perfectly centered, which is what I'm going to do now. So I've made two chart markings just to give me an idea of where the center is. Once you're happy and you don't want to make any changes, we're going to go ahead and peel the paper backing off. So now you're going to line up, get your placement on everything how you would like it to be. And now it is time to iron. Hold for a few seconds. And that is it. Graphic is applied. So here is my completed page hoodie with my Barbie graphic. What do you guys think? My final thoughts, I absolutely love it. I love this pattern. I love the graphic on it. And I also love the fact that the graphic kind of has confetti to match the lining and I did not even notice. I was just trying to use up 
fabrics from my stash because all of the fabric stores are closed. But everything just goes so nicely together. My card is just some paracord I had laying around in my trims. But just in case you don't have any trims on hand, I was thinking that maybe you could use shoelaces. So if you have a pair of shoes that you no longer wear, then you can use the shoelaces and nobody will ever know. So this hoodie was a breeze to put together. I really, really enjoyed making this. It was a lovely, lovely sew. I also enjoyed collabing with Karina. We were chatting for the whole time, just sharing ideas and sharing our progress. This was one of the most fun makes I've had recently. It's, this was a breath of fresh air. Like I needed this win. So now I have a gorgeous Barbie hoodie and I also have a velo sweatshirt. So I think this is my new go-to pattern for hoodies or sweatshirts. I love where it hits me. I love the alterations I made. The sleeves are perfect length. And I'm thinking that alien cutout that I showed you guys, I think that's gonna be on another page. Now I've seen Karina's hoodie already. And let me tell you, I think we both knocked this out the park. I love her fabric choice. What was most fun about this collab is that initially we had no idea what each other was doing and we just ended up going completely opposite. We ended up making the two different views. Also I did silver eyelets and she did gold. Speaking of eyelets, I did record a how to video when I was installing my eyelets and I will have that video coming up soon so you can stay tuned for that. Anyway that is the end of this video. I hope it does not turn out too long since it has a tutorial built in. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed making this and I know I'm gonna enjoy wearing this just as much. Don't forget to give me big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, I would really, really appreciate that. And click the bell notification so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And of course, head over to Karina's channel to see her hoodie. I am out and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.